Okay, well, I'm having a terrible time trying to replicate that right there. And that is called a magnetic ring bomb Stirling engine that will run on differential and very low temperature differentials. Um, and it'll run on the palm of your hand versus air temperature, or it'll run on cold versus what's uh, what's around here. And the reason I was so interested in this and wanting to build one of these was I'm trying to build a Stirling engine that I 3D print on the 3D printer using PLA plastic that melts at a very low temperature and then build the engine such that I can run it like that on ice. And um, I was researching uh, these L what they call LTD Stirling engine and I liked this design so I bought one. And it's really cool. It uh, has a little foam displacer that goes up and down and uh, thick aluminum plates and precision bearings and all that. It'll run on ice. And I can't replicate it. And I'm not sure where I'm going to go right now. But there were a bunch of problems that I ran into. This is kind of as close as I got to it right here. And uh, it doesn't work. Um, not even close. It won't even start to run. Uh, there's the magnets. And then it has a... Uh, a foam displacer in it like that that the uh, magnet pulls it up and down and um, I'm not quite sure exactly why I, I cannot get this to work and I've been working on this about a week this is a long long fail for me but this is what happens when you do these projects sometimes you just don't ever get them to work but um, one of the problems I ran into is you can't use steel and this uh, cookie can thing that worked here great when you pull up the displacer with a, a mechanism like this little wire with a crankshaft it's really easy but you do it with a magnet and you run into this it, it gets attracted to it so that that right there was an exercise in futility trying to use steel you know and I tried different displacers and all that so then I, I got some aluminum. This is an aluminum uh, clipboard. And I started working with that. And I've also been trying plastic CDs. And you do have to have thick top and bottom plates. And it has to be a rigid, airtight structure for this to, to work. And um, this isn't. This isn't anywhere close to working at all. Yeah, it's too flimsy. Uh, the tolerances are too loose. Um, it just design flaws. But uh, it does have kind of an interesting characteristic because it is kind of loose. I can kind of manually do it. And that's kind of fun. But yeah, this uh, magnetic. Um, ring bomb where the <clears throat> excuse me the um, um, displacer is pulled up with the magnets it just looked like such a simple simple thing but it's not because when the magnets get close to the displacer it has a tendency to want to lift the displacer up to the very top when it hits that thing right there and unless you have this just right you over overdo it and it comes up and hits the top of the the magnet I might be able to get this to work if I use a uh, thicker aluminum that I, I sure can't use steel that's not going to work because of the magnetic problem here with this magnet being pulled up and down also the displacer uh, this is what I've been using for years is this type of a foam displacer and that's too heavy you, you have to use so much magnetism to pull it up then your machine gets too too heavy so like I say the, the things that worked on that design right there where you're pulling up the displacer with a thin wire going around a bell crank like that don't work on this magnetic uh, ring bomb idea and the other thing is um, the whole idea of being able to pull this up and down and get that into phase where the um, 
Sterling cycle takes place, I really don't quite understand yet. Because on a regular Sterling, these are 90 degrees apart. The power piston and the displacer are set at 90 degrees apart. And that's how this Sterling works. On this thing here, you're relying on that going down there, pulling it up, and then dropping it. You can see that thing at the very bottom there being pulled up and then being dropped. And that has to happen at the right time and in the right situation so that that goes on. So anyway, this is quite a quite a project. I was initially trying to run it with this uh, a cylinder kind of thing right here. And that is a major no-no because it, it's not precise enough. You have to have a precision uh, throw on the piston if the diaphragm idea was complete failure so I found, got in love with these glass cylinders and started going that direction but very very uh, difficult project on your kitchen countertop now you can do this in the garage with the machine tools and stuff and most of the guys I've watched at least they have some power tools they're doing it with but uh, you better be really really careful when you design one of these things if you expect that to happen. And here again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to print one of these out of PLA plastic. And that just becomes really, really hard to do something like that. So anyway, I'm, uh, I'm working with this, but man, I'm not having much luck. One of those projects, learning experience. Thanks for watching.